This is the Honor Magic V2, and I've had ooh, the best part of two months with this now. And in my first video back in July, I couldn't really show you that much. The software wasn't ready. And while this is still not running final, final software, I can now at least give you a proper walkthrough. And also, since we've had the Galaxy Fold 5 and Pixel Fold launch in the meantime, I can also now more easily demonstrate why I reckon this Honor Magic V2 is the best foldable phone in the world right now. Although it's not perfect, I do still have some feedback for Honor, but it's not just about the Honor Magic V2. This video is a twofer. You get two for one, because as well as this, I also want to show you this. I'm here in Berlin at the IFA Tech Show. Here, Honor is showing off their brand new Honor V purse, which is definitely a head turner. And I have so many questions, but I'll come back to this in a minute. But let's start with this guy. What makes this so special? Well, firstly, if I close it, it's just 9.9 .9 millimeters thick. For comparison, the new thinner Galaxy Fold 5 is 13.4 millimeters. The Pixel Fold, 12.1. All three do fold fully flat, which is great, but just look how much slimmer this Honor Magic V2 is. And unfolded, it becomes the thinnest smartphone ever at 4.7 millimeters. Absolutely nuts. And we still get proper flagship specs. We have stereo speakers, dual 5G SIM, and also a total of five cameras, including this triple lens setup on the back. It also weighs 231 grams, which actually makes it lighter than the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is not a folding phone. Although the best bit for me is this front cover screen, because while I do like the Pixel Fold smaller passport size, I've never been a fan of the Galaxy Fold super narrow remote control style cover screen. And the reason I genuinely do love this on the Magic V2 is because we have a 20 by nine aspect ratio for the cover screen, which is the same as most regular smartphones. So you really can just go around using the 6.43 inch cover screen. It's thin and light enough to not feel like you're holding a brick and the screen is big enough to be comfortable. But then it smoothly unfolds to reveal this 7.9 inch tablet screen for when you want a bigger screen experience or for some tasty split screen action. And here you can have two apps side by side with a third floating on top. In my book, this is exactly what a foldable phone should be. Not a compromise between a small front screen and an awkwardly big two-handed uh, tablet screen, the best of both worlds. And the new titanium hinge is more durable and uses far fewer components than their previous hinge. Now I have this vegan leather material on the back here. Uh, it does also come in glass options in various colors, although uh, this is actually six grams lighter than the glass version. So this is the lightest model of the Honor Magic V2. And I do quite like this also, not just for the little bit of extra texture, but it just makes it a little bit grippier to hold, less likely to slip out of your pocket. The only downside is I would like to have seen some level of water or dust resistance because unfortunately Honor doesn't claim any IP rating for this. The Honor Magic V2 also boasts what I believe is the biggest battery in any foldable phone. In here, we have a 5,000 million power dual cell battery. And this is using a very innovative new silicon carbon design for the actual battery. And while Honor were very kind enough to provide me with a deep dive sort of technical explanation of how it all works, most of it kind of went over my head. But the idea is we have much higher efficiency batteries that are also capable of fast charging, up to 66 watt uh, charging with this guy. It's thinner, it's lighter, and it lasts longer. Not too shabby. Let's talk about these displays. And while I've already mentioned that I like the size and the aspect ratio, particularly of the cover screen, there's more to it. Both screens are 120 hertz LTPO, and they also both have Honor's super fast 3840 hertz PWM dimming technology, which makes the screens more comfortable for your eyes, particularly at lower brightnesses. And together with their dynamic dimming and their circadian night display, eye comfort is a real priority here, which definitely helps when you're endlessly scrolling through Reddit before bed. A couple of things I have noticed though. Uh, firstly, if you have had the opportunity to try out other folding phones and then you get to have a play with this, you will immediately realize how impressive, how subtle this crease is. Running my finger along the Galaxy Fold 5, the Pixel Fold and the Honor Magic V2, you really can feel and see the difference. And it's just an everyday quality of life thing that makes using a foldable a much nicer experience. Also, while I have these three side by side, the Galaxy Fold and the Pixel Fold, I noticed the Honor Magic V2 screen seemed to be significantly less reflective. 
The second thing I noticed is how the interior screen can't get quite as bright as the exterior screen. This peaks at 2500 nits, this 1600 nits, and you can see the difference, particularly if you're outside using it, and this tablet screen can't quite match the Galaxy Fold 5 for brightness. So that would be perhaps one area for improvement, but most of the time when I'm out and about I am using just the cover screen anyway, and this does get very bright. Now on the inside, we have the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, that is the slightly overclocked mid-year refresh version, along with a whopping 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256, 512 or one terabyte of storage. So plenty of power on tap here, and as you would expect, everything feels incredibly slick. Then we have the cameras, and I must admit Honor have come a long way in the last couple of years with their camera technology. So we have five cameras in total, two 16 megapixel selfies on the front and on the inside, but of course the beauty of a foldable is being able to use the main rear cameras together with the cover screen preview, so you can see yourself and use the higher quality cameras. With a 50 megapixel wide, a 50 megapixel ultra wide, which doubles as a macro, and a 20 megapixel telephoto, now I do still have to caveat that this is not final software, but I've come away pleasantly surprised by how good the camera is. Colors are natural, good dynamic range, lots of detail, but this does borrow a lot of the camera tech that we saw in the Honor Magic 5 Pro, which came out earlier this year, including one of my favorite features, motion sensing capture. Just tap this little icon and also then turn on auto capture. And so whenever it detects fast motion using AI, it'll intelligently capture the highlights. And I'm genuinely blown away how good this looks. It's almost too good, like I've Photoshopped myself in the frame. In fact, I screen recorded this whole process just to prove this is all done on the phone automatically and then it just saves the best shots. It's a really neat feature. Now, of course, the software is just as important as the hardware, especially with foldables like this and taking advantage of the extra screens and the extra flexibility. And again, not final software, but on the whole, I've had a really good time with this. It's fast, I've had very few bugs or crashes, and there's a ton of features and customization options to play with in the settings. For instance, the ebook mode, which turns the screen black and white, then fire up the Kindle app, lovely. When you're gaming, swipe in and hold to bring up the gaming menu, and here you can switch between balanced or game performance modes. There's also a special foldable phones menu here, and the app scaling option is particularly useful for changing how an app displays, whether it's full screen, 4x3 or 16x9. Also, switching between the interior and the cover screens is remarkably smooth in most apps, and the tablet screen does also support the Honor Stylus, although I don't actually have one with me here, and it won't be available in all markets. You can also pinch in on the home screen, and here you can change the order of the screens, and in the settings you can actually turn off this dual screen layout if you prefer, although I think it fits the foldable format quite nicely. You can also swipe in and hold from the edge for the quick app menu, and either tap the app to open it as a floater, if you will, on top, or drag it to either side for split screen. Now not all apps do support this, but a good amount do, and you can change it to one third, half, or a two third split. The only thing I would have liked is for an option to have a taskbar at the bottom with my favorite and recent apps that can pop up over the top of my full screen apps, and also where I could perhaps save my split screen layout, as while you can revisit it in the recently used apps menu, you can't save it to your home screen. There is also a flex mode of sorts when you partially fold the Honor Magic V2, but so far it only seems to offer any additional functionality in the camera app and YouTube. But hopefully with more time, more apps will be optimized for this. And finally, I would have also liked the ability not just to have the cover screen preview for the camera, but also to fully switch the camera UI to the front screen, so I can change modes and lenses without turning the whole thing back round. So yes, there is room for improvement, as with any device really, and I think a lot of that can also come from software updates, which I'm uh, very excited about, especially as this has not even properly been launched yet, and this is not final software, so uh, I will, of course, withhold my final judgment. I think the big question for most people is going to be, when can I buy it? Can I actually buy it? Well, unfortunately, there isn't any new information. Uh, in China, where this is launching, you can get it for what is the equivalent of about $1,250 or around a thousand pounds, which seems far too good to be true. And if it does eventually launch outside of China, I think it will be more expensive than that. But there is no official word on if it's gonna to come to you know, Europe, UK, or US just yet. Although my gut says it probably will, but perhaps towards the end of the year. I think Honor also gauging just the interest of it. So maybe let me know in the comments if you would actually consider buying this. Fingers crossed it will come out because I absolutely adore this thing and I reckon it will but we may have to just wait a few more months. But in the meantime there is something else I want to show you. They have unveiled the Honor V Purse, a stylish new ultra thin ultra light foldable concept designed to be more unique, more elegant, more avant-garde perhaps. 
I mean, for starters, this is the first catwalk I've ever been to at a tech show, but I do appreciate the idea of showing off your phone and kind of making it a fashion accessory rather than just having a slab of glass that you put in your pocket or in your bag. The Honor V purse is less than nine millimeters thick and it has this big cover screen that you can actually personalize. Personalize, get it? And using a range of sensors built in, the purse cover screen has special animations when it moves. To be fair, I'm probably not the target audience for this, but it's a fun concept and I'd be keen to see more of it. Although I do have questions about how durable that screen is and also would it make me a prime target for would-be thieves. Still, with a customizable always on display and with a variety of chains and straps, the idea is you can use the Honor V purse to accessorize different outfits, whatever the occasion. Although I'd definitely like to see some male models show this off as well. So the Honor V purse is just a concept for now. There's no like official release date or pricing or anything like that. But let me know what you make of it in the comments below. And also, as I say, if they were to launch the Honor Magic V2, which again, fingers crossed they do, would you consider buying one? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've got any questions also, pop a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, a like and subscribe would be fantastic. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.